Tottenham Hotspur are in a very good place. Not only do they look set to probably finish in Champions League qualification places, currently in fifth, could go into fourth if they win their game in hand. And also, I am a Manchester United fan. We are not catching you. We are not going to catch Tottenham. We are not going to catch Villa unless Tenor calls us a miracle because Man United are a lot worse than Tottenham and Villa. We've just somewhat overperformed with great winners in games we didn't deserve to win to even be close. So Tottenham at the moment will probably be in the Champions League next season unless something goes wrong because of how well the English clubs have been doing in Europe. But next season, I think, is Tottenham season. And I see a lot of negativity around Spurs on the timeline because they play brilliant football at the beginning of the season. And they haven't looked as good now, but they're grinding out results. But you grind out results at the end of the season. But I want to look at Spurs' recruitment, some changes they've made to their recruitment that's been confirmed, and why I think they're positive changes. Rumours and reports and actually top-tier journalists like Alistair Gold and Fabrizio Romano and what they're saying Spurs is going to do in the summer. Some confirmed changes already happening at Spurs. Analyzing where Spurs at now and why I think this season has been a success as a Manchester United fan, looking at Tottenham compared to expectations, why I can see progress and what Ange is building. But I'm going to break down exactly why I think Spurs is in a really good place. And if I was a Spurs fan, I'd be excited. Like I think Spurs are on track to be doing some really good things. I'm a little bit worried about them. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I can't believe I'm saying that as a Man United fan, but I'm a bit worried about Tottenham. Anyway, Alistair Gold said this. He said, Tottenham will look to improve their options in the number six role to see if there are any potential upgrades in the coming summer transfer window with Atalanta's Brazilian midfielder Edison, one of the number of players being looked at. I'm going to confirm some of the transfer news. I'm going to get into some of the changes that have been confirmed and then I'm going to talk about this. So I just thought I'd get the news out of the way to give you guys content, even though this, some of this news is like a day old. It was also said that Tottenham are exploring the market for a creative winger and Fabrizio Romano said that Tottenham's mission is to get business done as early as possible this summer for the majority of the names they have in mind and positions they want to cover. I could see around three or four signings coming in. Now, it's all about the quality of signings, not quantity. And look at Chelsea and the quantity of signings. Where's the quality bar? Cole Palmer, maybe Gusto. It's about the quality of signings. You know, I could see Tottenham fans maybe wanting six or seven signings. But realistically, if Tottenham got a top number six, a top winger, particularly someone that could maybe play on the right, um, and a top number nine, because then you can just push Son out on the left. And then maybe someone top that could come in and play centre back, but maybe even cover at fullback, someone versatile. Shame Julian Timbers off the market. He, I think he would have been really good under Ange Bull. That's four top, top signings that I think could elevate Spurs' levels. And if they sell well, maybe they can bring in five. It's about the quality. And we're going to talk about quality because that's something that Tottenham seem to be focusing on a lot right now. This was also said by Fabrizio Romano. I think it's not just stars for the future, but also solid players. I don't expect any superstars. We know Tottenham's strategy is different from this. The strategy of Spurs is to sign two, three, four different players rather than just one superstar. It's the clear project of the club. And I saw a couple of responses to this negative from Spurs fans. But I'm going to tell you this now as a Manchester United fan. Signing big name, high wage players, superstars is not the way to go. You don't want to be signing superstars. And here's an example of that. Spurs are never going to compete with Manchester City financially. And even though Liverpool are a lot better off than Spurs financially, although FFP-wise, Spurs are probably in one of the best places right now. But Liverpool also couldn't really compete with Man City financially. And while they've got a bit more spending power than Man City, if you look at Klopp's signings, Robertson from Hull, Mane from Southampton, Van Dijk from Southampton, which was a big expensive one, Alisson from Roma, Salah from Roma, Firmino from Hoffenheim, uh, Massip from Schalke. You know, you look at the key signings, a few players that came through in the Youngs, I think even Henderson came from like Sunderland, when Naldon came from Newcastle, and Newcastle were awful back then. Um, you look at actually Liverpool, when they their league winning side, you know, the OG league winning side at the Klopp, they weren't big name superstar signings. I am a Manchester United fan and we've spent a lot more than Liverpool in those years. A lot, lot more on a lot more on player wages as well. And Liverpool have been way ahead of Manchester United because Man United have gone and bought superstar, big name signings that haven't worked out. Falcao, Di Maria, massive flop, a bit more recent, Alexis Sanchez. Flop. You can even argue Paul Pop was a flop. He left for free. Anthony, who, to be fair, everyone knew he wasn't worth 85 million. Flop. Sancho flop. Tottenham, a doggy, Saar, Vicario, three players that no one really knew who they were. Look how key they've been this season. Pedro Porro was a bit more well known, but again, a young player they took a risk on. Not, not crazy money. Not crazy money. Mickey Van der Ven, you know, not crazy money. You look at that. 
And, you know, it's not about signing big stars. It's all Tottenham fans saying, how can we compete with Arsenal City but not signing big stars? And maybe, you know, let's say next season you finish second and you're one point off first and you have a really good season. Maybe you do need to break that bank on maybe an £80 million player to get you from second to first. But that will be in a position where you only need one or two signings. Tottenham, you probably four or five, but two of those signings can be cheap and three of those signings can be more marquee. But Mickey van der Ven, James Madison, Saar, Son, Eriksen, Deli, Ali, Bale, Modric, Adogi. None of those were big name stars when they joined Spurs. They were players that were sort of developed into superstars. And that's what you want. And that's what Ineos are going to do at Manchester United now. They're changing the transfer strategy. And I think that's a really smart transfer strategy to make. But what's actually been confirmed? Because in the title, I've said title changes confirmed or something. This has been confirmed by Ange Postacopoli that there will be changes and changes happening in many areas. Ange was asked if he's going to strengthen the centre back. And he's saying, if you're saying that, and he's saying, if you're saying it is an area we can strengthen, then yes, it's an area we will probably look at, he said. With all these things, it's about trying to strengthen the group as much as anywhere else. If you think about when I first arrived, we had maybe six or seven centre-backs at the club. So it's not just numbers. It's more about the ability of those players to play football. We want and fit into what we're trying to build here. I think it's an area of the park we will look to strengthen, but I also think we'll look to strengthen all areas of the park come end of the season. The planning is already underway. Now, that's an interesting quote from Ange Postacoglu. He's saying planning is already underway at Spurs, as you'd expect. But I think that is Ange Postacoglu interpreting it my way of saying, you know, we've got, we've got to strengthen the centre-back, we've got to sell centre-backs, to buy centre-backs, but also develop players. I think Ange is basically saying everywhere, all around Spurs, we want to sell players, but we want to buy players because we've got players that we need to sell. We need to offload players. We need to bring players in. You know, someone like uh, Brian Gill will probably go. Someone like Hoybier will go. Someone like Skip will go. Hoybier and Skip coming, going out, Bergfall and maybe a top number six going in is what I'd expect to see. Gill going out, maybe a top forward co coming in. Potentially Richardson could be one that they maybe sell for a little bit of money, although I do think he's had good spells this season. And maybe a Jokeres comes in. Maybe a, someone really surprising comes in you know, sort of doing things at the back. Maybe you get go let go of someone at the back. Obviously, Dyer is probably good. Dyer is gone. Is Dyer gone? Because he's out of contract. Maybe you bring in a brown weight. But I think that is Ange confirming. Stuff is going on. They will look to strengthen all areas of the pitch and work is being done at centre-back. I think players will go, players will come in. And I think, you know, Tottenham are planning stuff. But I think that Tottenham, what they're planning is quite smart because they brought in, well, they haven't, well, Shohan Lange, Lange? Johan Lang, Johan Lang, however you say his name, he's obviously involved in transfers and he's known to be an advocate of a data-driven approach with regards to identifying future targets. And Spurs is understood to be modernising their recruitment approach, which will see changes made to recruitment staff. Now, I think something Spurs have done really well in the last two, three years is recruitment. Ben Tunker, Kulu, Romero, they were sort of players that sort of, were they loaned and then brought? They, they're more recent. They've been three really good players. I know Kulu's does not quite suit to the wing and Ange system, but last season, Kulu and Benton Kerr have been so key. Romero's been so key. Recently, Sara and Adogi sort of being unknown on loan and coming in. Vicario, Mickey van der Ven, probably really surprised a few people. I think Brennan Johnson has the ability to explode under Ange Ball. And, and James Madison, obviously, has dropped off a bit for with injury. It's, it's been brilliant for Spurs. And I think, you know, Spurs' recruitment's improved. And now they're going to be looking at a data-driven approach. And someone that does data-driven approach is Michael Edwards. I did a video a week ago talking about Liverpool and the new manager situation. And I said, I wouldn't be surprised with Alonso off the table if they look at Amarin because Michael Edwards is so interested in data and Amarin's data is one of the best as a manager. And interestingly, apparently Michael Edwards has actually been paying visits to Spurs and meeting sort of lunch and people. And I think what Spurs might do this summer, and I don't know this for a fact, but I think Spurs might sign maybe a Neto, maybe not Neto because of his injuries and his, his money, but might sign a Nico Williams, a Neto, a Sule, a sort of somewhat known winger. And then they might sign maybe an Amadou Anana or Matt Suifa or a somewhat known six. And then they might do a few signings like Bergfall. Now, I know who Bergfall is because he was linked to United multiple times. I did a video on Bergfall. He will be, he, if he's not an unbelievable signing for Spurs, I will eat this hoodie. I think that Bergfall will be one of the best bits of business Spurs have done. And I'm saying that, like, the kid, I've watched the kid. He's so good. So, and he's smashing it at the moment. But I think they might do something that surprises anyone. There's, there's that um, really good young centre-back at Bologna, whatever, however you say the name. They might bring in a Xerxes. Who knows? But I think they could bring in one or two names you don't know and then one or two names you do know. But those one or two names you don't know, Saar, a doggy, even Vicario in the past, then I think that it's, that's the best way to approach it. And then when you're like maybe second and you're just that 
that close to being with Man City and Arsenal, that's when you go for those one, two big signings. And I think if you look at Spurs, Mickey van der Ven, Saar, uh, Son, Christian Eriksen, Ali, Adogi, Bale, Modric, they were not big names when they were signed. And then they became key players for Spurs. No, I, like none of them were big names. And that's the approach. So what would I do? If Spurs had the money, and I don't think they will have this much money, they might if they sell well when Daniel Levy opens up the purse strings, but Daniel Levy's a bit Daniel Levy. I would go for Bramthwaite Weefer, probably Nico Williams, because one, he's got a 43 million release clause and Neto's been quoted at 70 million. And if Neto could stay fit, he'd be perfect for Ange, but I really think he would. I'd go I'd go all out for Shockeres. And um, if you couldn't get Shockeres, I would maybe take the risk on Gonzalo Ramos. Uh, but I think that, that if Spurs want a top centre-back, a top DM, a top winger and a top striker, I also probably think they do need better full-back depth. Uh, Doggy and, and, and um, obviously Pora have been great. They probably do need full-back depth, but I think you could maybe find a a 10 million up and coming fullback. I think that's where Spurs will go for a date driven approach to saying, look, we need some proper backup for Poro. And they might find someone for like 7 million quid and actually boosh, boosh, they're good. Do you know what I mean? But that's what I think Spurs, that's what I would do at Spurs. But let's talk about Tottenham. Why should Tottenham fans be excited? And I see a bit of negativity around Spurs because they start the season so well. Maybe the expectations got high. They got the injury crisis, but then the players are coming back from injury and they're not, the Spurs they were at the beginning of the season. They're not the Spurs they were at the beginning of the season. But I still think if I was a Spurs fan, I'd feel really positive about where Spurs are at because you've got to look at the expectations before this season for Tottenham Hotspur. What Anne showed at the start of the season, which is promise of what you can see next season and what he can build upon and he can get back to those levels next season, but also where Spurs are at. He implemented a great style of football. While it hasn't been as good lately, it's still better than Manchester United. It's still better than Chelsea. I will tell you that for a fact. It's still not actually that bad. It's been a bit iffy lately and it's been like you've had good 20-minute spells and then dropped off. But we've seen it implemented. We've seen what Ange can do. And he's got big results. And before the injury crisis, you were top of the league. You've dropped off, but you still, considering your injury crisis, you still were doing all right. And you're on track for UCL. Most people predicted Spurs to finish 7th, 8th. Some people had them as back bar as ninth and 10th. You lost Harry Kane. He was, for me, I think he's the best striker in the world. I think he's better than Haaland. I think he's unbelievable. You've, you lost a world-class player. And some of the names you brought in, you know, Vicario, Mickey Van they weren't well known. Look how they've done. You look at uh, Andrew's recruitment and his recent recruitment. I think it's been really good. And Spurs will improve on that with a data-driven approach. Vicario has been really, really good. Madison's been good. Van der Ven's been good. I think Andrew's recruitment's good. I think Brennan Johnson has been really good lately and I think he will explode under Andrew. I think Andrew's shown he can develop players. I think Basuma's dropped off a lot lately. At the beginning of the season, Andrew had him playing well. Look what Andrew's done with Saar. Look what Andrew's done with Poro. Look how they've really become key players. Saar and Poro, for me, have probably been Spurs' as two of their best players this season. Uh, Mickey Vanderman would be Spurs' player of the season if he wasn't injured. I think he's been their best player. Um, but obviously, Andrew also looks like an ambitious manager that wants to win trophies. He's not at Spurs to... Just, you know, I'll get in the top four. Woo. Ange has got that winning mentality of he wants to take Spurs that next step. And I think next season they will probably take domestic trophies a bit more serious. Uh, but also this team is young. You know, you look at Arteta and you're going to hate me for comparing Spurs to Arsenal. But you look at Arteta a couple of years ago and, and the young squad and they sort of had that season where they finished fifth and, and Tottenham just beat them to top four, which I loved because I, I much prefer Tottenham to Arsenal. Um, I feel like as a Man United fan, Arsenal Liverpool seem to be the biggest rivals, followed by Man City. Uh, maybe that's just me, just because Arsenal fans are really loud online. Um, and they, they came fifth, but they came fifth under Arteta. But you were starting to see they were playing a little bit of good football and they had this young squad and then they added to that that summer. And I think that's what Tottenham will do. Now, the big thing is, it is all about recruitment. It's about quality, not quantity of signings. This is probably the biggest transfer winner for Spurs. This is a massive transfer winner for Spurs. They've got to get it right. They've got to get the outs right. They've got to get the ins right. But if they get their recruitment right, I think they're in a very good place to, to catch the big boys. You know, you look, we know how Ange wants to play. We know that Ange plays good football. And we know that next season, the players will learn more about how Ange wants to play. They'll have pre-season again to learn the system. And that should naturally get better. Key signings I expect to be made and depth to be a little bit better. I think that they will spend smartly Spurs. I think one thing, although Daniel Levy's a bit tight with the purse strings, Spurs have spent smart recently. They already have some top players. And with Klopp leaving, Liverpool could drop off. Pep could follow. City could be hit with 115 charges. Chelsea and Man United are a bit of a mess right now. You know, Arsenal's sort of long-term future is probably looking looking the most comfortable out of the, the top teams right now. And why am I even Man United and Chelsea aren't the top team right now? But even the players you're linked with, if we go back here, 
Goodmanson's a surprising one. Uh, Eze could be a good addition as well. You, you link with some really, really good players. I think Xerxes one to watch. 35 million, according to Florian Prattyberg. He would really, if, if you got in some top, top wingers uh, in Neto or Nico Williams, along with Brennan Johnson, and you got obviously Son Xerxes, someone that can facilitate fast wingers, um, not necessarily a goal scorer. Maybe Spurs want a goal scorer, but you've got Son that's a goal scorer f- forward anyway. Xerxes would be someone that could be really good. Uh, Gibbs White, someone who's Premier League proven, but there's some really interesting names that they're linked to. And yeah, anyway, I thought this was a different kind of video, but I've seen a bit of negativity from Spurs fans online. Um, and I think that Spurs are in a good place this season when you think of the expectations beginning of the season. Yes, you've dropped off, but I think that Spurs could be making some key transfers, but it's all about how well do Spurs make those transfers. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching. Bye.